this picture is respectfully dedicated to the unsung heroes of the oil field. The nitro shooters, nitroglycerin experts, men who handle one of the most violent explosives known to science, men who daily place their lives in jeopardy, who actually live by the second that the world may have oil. One tiny spark, the slightest impact or jar, and... What's happening? Is everybody going crazy? Hello. Hello. Give me the nitro plan. Nitroglycerin. Trip. Nitroglycerin? I thought they used the back road. They do. Something must be wrong. Well, thanks for helping me out. That's all right. Excuse me, I want to see what happened. Wait a minute. What's your name? You'll find out. You stay around here. What'd he say? Hold on a minute, Rocky. The truck was empty. The driver must have been having a little fun. Sheriff, may I talk to Rocky? Sure, Kathy. Hello, Rocky. Kathy. Who was it? Well, thanks. All right, Rocky. And Kathy, you tell Frank that that won't happen again. Goodbye. Well, Ed, you must be crazy. What's the matter? Matter? You know you drove right smack through town. Couldn't I? But you did. Oh, I don't remember a thing about it, Rocky. Honest, I don't. I was driving down a side street, and then the next thing I remember, I'm pulling up in front of here. You're getting nitro fever, boy. Oh, I'm... Now listen, Ed. Yesterday I found a stain on one of your empties, and the day before you dropped one. Well, I couldn't help that. It, it just slipped. Well, how many slips do you think it takes? It's no use, Ed. You can't handle this stuff anymore. Besides, I want you to quit. Before you quit out there on the road. Oh, I'll be all right now, Rocky. I, you can't find me now. I'm broke. Well, you've been averaging 40 bucks a day for a year. That's pretty good dough. I'm sorry, Ed. I gotta let you go. But if ever I can help you with anything, you come and see me. Hello, Gabby. Come down here right away. But, Rocky, I promised Nancy and the kids I'd take them to the movies. Well, I'm short-handed. What's the matter? Don't you wear the pants in your own family? Oh, that's just the rumor the boys started. You bet I'll tell her. Listen. Listen, Nancy, I'm not going to take you to the movies. Now, that's final. I don't want another squawk out of you. I got a job to do, understand? What did you say? But, Mommy, Rocky asked me oh. to... Rocky, I suppose you're going to spend your one day off out in the run. If you do, you better not come back home. I'll be right down. And did I tell her? I'll bet you did. Mr. Sanders? That's right. What can I do for you? Uh, Mr. Hill sent me. So you want to be a soup handler, eh? Well, I'd like to try it, sir. Well, the front office thinks you'll make a good one. Come here. That's a picture of a nitro truck that had a little accident. There's nothing there. That's exactly what we found. Nothing. You still want the job? Yes, sir. 
Come on. You'll have to take your shoes off. I got a pair of sneakers in here that may fit you. But you buy yourself a pair of rubber shoes to work in. All right. And take all the metal off you. Rings, keys, watch, silver money. What's the idea of this trip, Mr. Sanders? Rocky to you. The boys inside are filling empties with soup. We gotta be careful of metal on account of the friction. One little spark and... Is that all? That's all. Let's go. Hey, easy. I got some fresh meat for the trucks. Dan Loring. This is Sam Street. Glad to know you. I'm glad to meet you. Easy's whipped the average about four years. So you'll take your instructions from him. Rocky thinks I know all the answers. Only as far as soup is concerned. If you got any oilless oil wells or goldless gold mines knocking around in your back pocket, you'll soon learn why we call him easy. Uh, you better take your coat off and get to work. All right. Well, I'll see you later. Great fellow, that Rocky. But he's tough. You know, he was born with a set of teeth and a full beard. Did you ever handle soup before, sir? No, sir, I never have. Well, it looks like water. But it's got an awful bite like a dog. And you got to treat it like a dog. Make a pet out of it. Go easy with it. You won't have any trouble. But if you don't, you got a mad dog on your hands. Well, we got to load that truck outside. Get all that can, son. Come on. Just follow me and do just as I do. Just take it easy. All right, son. Easy now. But look, you gotta watch these loose corks. See? Hello, Tim. Oh, yeah, sure. Mr. Street, isn't it? Did the boys tell you I was going back driving soup? Yeah, honest. Rocky said so. He promised me next month. That's swell, Tim. That's great. Yeah. I'm sure glad to hear it. I, I gotta go and get Rocky's coffee now. He, he likes it nice and hot. Nice and hot. Nitro fever. He's wacky as a toad. Thought he was blown up. Left his truck in the road. We didn't find him for days. Poor guy'd be better off dead. Well, you better go get your stuff. I'll introduce you to the boys. Hey, fellas, this is Dan Lauren. Oh, Give him the key to the city, will you? Grab it, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but water, my friend. My name's Smokey Nelson. I don't know. Hey, Kathy, I gotta go out on a run. Oh, it's only a short one. Yeah. I'll be home in time for supper. No, don't worry, darling. Well, we'll be seeing you later, fellas. Yeah, let's go to work. Come on, Come on Nanny. Come on, fellas. There they are. Hope they fit you. Thanks, easy. Did anybody ever see a nitro truck blow up? No, son. Of course, if you're ever near enough to see it, you never live to tell about it. Hiya, boys. Hi, easy. Come on, boys. Clear up. Hey, we're drilled down 7,200 feet. Well, I'll be seeing you. <laughs>
I like plenty of distance between me and Nitro. Me too. You can't run a race with it. Not when it travels 26,000 feet a second. Yeah, and Ty, you lose. They put the stentonator on your last torpedo. you to always remember. All this wash and wipe off and empty. And the other thing is, never call me mister, because if you do, we're both liable to explode. <laughs> Makes you see double and feel single. <laughs> Stealing smart cracks from Winchell again. What is it your business, sir? You Winchell? Nancy again? Yes, this is the fifth one. One no trump. I've never seen it without a cocktail in one hand, a weak no trump in the other, and a bad case of nerves. <laughs> oh, boys, I got a new nifty. I tell you, I know a fella that died from alcohol without drinking one drop. And then you ask me why, and then I tell you the nifty. Hmm? I know a fella that died from alcohol and didn't drink even one drop. Well, somebody asked me why. What did he do with it, Julius? Rub it in his hair? No. <laughs> you gonna die? This is the funny. <laughs> he got run, run over, over by, by a, a brewery, brewery wagon. wagon. <laughs> I'm sick of playing. Bucky, where's Gabby? He's a half hour late. I'm worried. Oh. He called you, did he? That's very thoughtful of him. I know how you worry. I've got the jitters. Let's play poker. It's faster. Hello, Mommy. I'll fix that dimwit. Sorry I'm late. Don't you mommy me. Why don't you call me when you're late? Couldn't. Had a little trouble and was nowhere near a phone. You think you had trouble. I get you home, I'll show you what trouble really is. You can't do Hello, that. Hello, Nancy. What are you doing, taking them to the woodshed? Say, Gabby, they tell me that if you hold your breath, it don't hurt so much. <laughs> Hello, easy. Oh, All right. Easy. Hello. Hello, easy. Hello, gals. Those two would bury the hatchet. They're getting on my nerves. Well, somebody better bury it. If they don't, you'll have it in Gabby's head. But don't forget, everything's fair in love in Texas. Let's get a little drink. Yeah. You know, these soup handlers' wives are so jumpy, they're like Mexican jumping beans. Judas, why beer. This is a private club. We don't serve strangers. Oh, I forgot. I beg your pardon. This is my new partner, Dan Lauren. Dan, he's the most important man in Goliath. Stale joke, Julius. I know you. How'd you do, sir? I bet you I'll tell you, Nifty, but you never heard in your life before. 
Go ahead, shoot. There's two men, one six feet tall, one three feet tall. Then you say, who is the one three feet tall, and then I tell you to lift it. Go ahead. There's two... <laughs> Just gonna knock you in the middle of next week. Two men, one six feet tall, one three feet tall. Who is the one three feet tall? The uh, half-brother. <laughs> Come on, we gotta go. I was supposed to say that. We're late to have you pin me ears back. You can stop off at the plant and change your clothes. Good night, Judas. Good night. Yes, Good night. Yeah. Never mind, Rocky. Here he is. Calling up Rocky again, huh? I thought you promised me you wouldn't. I know, but well, I was awfully worried. Well, say, honey, this is Dan Loring. He's my, my new partner. I've invited him to dinner. How do you do? I met Mr. Loring in town this morning. How do you do, Mrs. Street? Mrs. Street? Say, she's my daughter. I oh. wouldn't marry him in a hundred years. Why not? I'm not such a bad-looking old guy with a hair cut and a shave. No, but you'd be too old in a hundred years. If you two want some dinner, you better get cleaned up. And don't scare the soap. All right, bully. Wait. Skip. Come on, come on. It's Saturday night. She sure talks like a wife. <laughs> yeah. I'm well, saying, honey, I, uh, 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 now wait a minute, wait a minute. I got a surprise for you. There. Go on, take it. What's the matter, don't you want it? Oh, Dad, you're always throwing your money away. If it isn't on oil wells or gold mines, it's on some other foolish thing. I never asked you for things like that. I know, honey, but, but, but this is the finest little piece of jewelry in the whole state of Texas. I don't want a piece of jewelry. I want peace of mind. Now listen, Kathy, baby, I, I, I oh, just... Oh, Dad, can't you understand? I'm sick and tired of holding my breath every second of the day waiting for you. Wondering if you're coming home safe. But honey, it's no issue of getting all wrought up. I promised you I'd quit just as soon as I get the house paid for in the car. Oh, you could have bought a hundred houses the money you've made. Yeah, that's right. Pretty soon we'll be on Easy Street. And then I promise you I'll quit. Honest, I will. I give you my word. Promises. Nothing but promises. You've been promising me for ten years. I can't stand it anymore. Oh, honey, now don't cry. Listen. Dan will hear you, Nan. You think you're nothing but a big crybaby. Now, come on, stop. All right. I'll stop it. But you've got to promise that you'll take the watch back and put the money on the house. All right. I promise. Good grief! Oh. Gosh, that's hot. Yes, sir? The history of nitroglycerin is the most interesting story you ever heard. It was discovered by a French doctor. They first used it for injection, you know, for a heart stimulant. And how, how they discovered it was an explosive, they shipped the case once over to New York. And some doc walloper got a hold of it and he dropped it. And he was the first fella to ever discover that nitroglycerin was an explosive. But the poor guy never did find it out. Or... Uh. Were you saying something? Yeah. I said there was a swell dance over at Judas's. Boys and girls, I got another nifty for you. I ask you what are they doing, and you ask me what, and then I tell you the nifty. All right, Julius, what are they doing? Nitro trucking. <laughs> <laughs> Two steaks. One for Gabby and uh, one for Gabby's eye. <laughs> Honest, fellas, it was a coat hanger. You know, pulling off my coat. Uh-huh. Nancy, what a marvelous pair of coat hangers you have. <laughs> May I cut in? Hello, Eric. Mr. Trumbull, Mr. Loring. How do you do? How are you? Excuse us, please. <laughs> Boy, 
Why, he sure got a beauty there. He certainly has. Are they going together? Who? Gabby and Nancy? They're married. No, uh, uh, Miss Kathy and... Uh... Oh, you mean Moneybags Trumbull? Sure. They go together like fish and whipped cream. Eric, I... I think you're awfully married. And I admire you very much, but... Don't you see? It isn't a question of what you can give me. It's a question of what I can't give you. And there's so many nice, nice girls Nice girls who love you and appreciate you so much more than I do. Yes, Kathy, I know it by heart. You've been telling me the same thing for three years. Just think, and the first time Gabby asked me, I said yes. Remember, Mommy? Remember? I'm trying to forget. <laughs> you know, if Eric isn't careful, one of these days, Kathy's going to say yes. And will he have a load of wife on his hands? I wish he'd ask me. It'd be wonderful to have breakfast in bed. Always know where your husband is. I guess I picked an onion out of the garden of love. Hello? This is Julius. Who? Hold the wire. That was Rocky. He once talked to, uh, uh, you. You oh, dumb cop. Oh, Rocky. All right. Be right over. He had an emergency call from Rocky, but he asked me to tell you not to worry and not to wait up for him. Oh, isn't that ducky? So I'm not to worry and not to wait up. I suppose he thinks he can turn my emotions on and off like a faucet. Please take me out of here. Do you want to go home? Home? That's the last place on earth I want to go. I want to go where there's some noise, speed, lots of noise, anything to make me forget that waiting, waiting until I could... <laughs> Come and go. Why do you want to get mixed up with them? I don't think you understand. I guess I don't. Unless you think you're night though, proof. Listen, Kathy. I've stuffed a paper in my shoes to keep the wind out of the holes. I've tried going to medical school on an empty stomach that growled so loud you couldn't hear yourself think. Let me tell you, it doesn't work out so well. I had to give it up. But I'm going back someday with plenty of money. Yes, sir, it's easy street for me or nothing. Did I say something wrong? No. I was just thinking. You talk just like my dad. Well, what's he got to do with it? Well, forget it. You through? I guess so. Well, I guess I won't be asking you any more foolish questions. <laughs> no, I guess not. Remember, fighting oil well fires is the easiest part of our job if you know what you're going to do. But you got to work fast and keep cool. I hope I don't forget to remember everything you taught me. Well, if you do, you'll miss Kathy's pot roast tonight. Any final instructions, Professor? Yeah. Relax. Before you twist that steering wheel out of shape. <laughs> Yeah. 
Yes, sir. You give this kid six months more and he'll make a real one-man outfit. Hey, that's a nice-looking ticker. To Gabby from Mummy. <laughs> it's a birthday present from Nancy. Hey, I'll make you a deal. If you quit on the road, I get the watch. If I quit, you get this gold pen. Nothing doing. They leak. Besides, you can't keep inking them. You can't keep inking the watch either, can you? Well, can you? No. That makes it even, is it a bet? Oh, you get me all mixed up. Besides, I wouldn't like to lose it. Of course, my kid likes to wind it. What's the matter? Got natural fever? You afraid? All right, the bet's on. But if I lose it, Nancy will be awful sore. You should worry. You only lose it if you kick off first. Here he comes, fellas. Right on schedule. You know, I've been breaking in these soup handlers for the last 10 years and never had a complaint. Does that prove anything to you, fellas? Just proves the dead men tell no tales. What is this? Well, the boys just wanted to see if it explode. <laughs> Wait. Again, this is your party. Come on. <laughs> I know he drew out $500 to make a payment on the house. Probably bought an interest in an asparagus mine. Oh, it's tough to raise a father nowadays. Oh, I'll show him the notice and see that you get the money. Thanks. Hey, Kathy, I've got some great news for you. I am. Uh, hey, go ahead. You better tell her. You oh, think... uh, won't you go ahead and tell her? I know. You've been promoted. You're on full pay now. How did you know? Who told you? Nobody. I just knew you were doomed to become a successful soup handler. Well, aren't you going to congratulate me? Sure. For such an accomplishment, I'll give you a Caesar's victory wreath. Oh, uh, and here's a little love note for you, sweetheart. You must have gotten the bank mixed up with an oil well again. Come on, son, come on. Don't let that little green-eyed boy get you down. Trumbull keeps this house looking like a well-kept grave. <laughs> yeah, and you look like the chief mourner. Hey, go on, follow her out. You can't tell. She might be cool enough to handle by now. Maybe you're right. Kathy, I want to ask you something. Better keep away from me. I'll turn my bees on you. Well, come here a minute, can't you? I, I can't shout. You're doing pretty well. You're bothering the bees. Hello. This is just a little import I picked up. I've never seen you look better. That's what I like about you. You're always so complimentary. Kathy, why do you get angry at everything I say or do? Oh, don't be silly. Why should I get angry with you? Annoyed? Yes, but not really angry. Well, all right. Annoyed, then. It's the same thing. Oh, no, it isn't. If you ever saw me angry, you'd know the difference. Is that what you came out here to ask me? No, not exactly. I, uh, I just wanted to ask you to go out and have dinner with me tonight. You know, to sort of celebrate? Can't. I've nothing to celebrate, and besides, I've got a roast going. Roasts are always better the next day. I like them hot. Is that hot enough for you? Oh, my roast. Oh, my neck. Well, what about dinner?
nothing much, just something silly. I don't believe in this stuff anyway. Incidentally, will you marry me? Incidentally, no. Well, that's the most abrupt answer on record. It's a pretty abrupt question. I could have just said no instead of incidentally no. Yeah, and you could have said yes, too. All right, we'll, we'll pretend I haven't said anything. We'll start all over again. Darling, will you please be my wife? Darling, I will please not be your wife. Well, will you please let me be your husband? No, dear. You... You said you didn't love Eric, and you still won't marry me? Oh, I know. It's the old bugaboo. I'm a soup handler. Frankly, Dad, I'd love to be your wife, not your widow. But I'm going to change all that. One of these days, it's going to be Dan Loring M. Dewey when I've made enough money. And in the meantime, don't you worry about anybody having to pick me up with a blotter. Because I handle soup like a mother handles its first baby. How's Kathy this morning, Easy? Oh, kind of, kind of in the dumps. What's the matter? You two have a fight? No, we got along swell last night. Say, hey, Easy, I'd like to ask you something. Only, uh, I'd better hold this while I ask you. Um, how would you like to have me for a son-in-law? Well, I'll tell you, son. If I had two gals, I'd wish you were twins. Does that tell you anything? <laughs> Thanks, Easy. Oh, boy. Thanks, Rocky. Palm trees, beautiful flowers, pineapples, golden sunshine. Hey, what's the matter? Are you going daffy? Gotta tell the wife first. See you later at the club. Yay! Gabby, what are you doing home? Mommy, when you married me, you married me for life, didn't you? Yeah, this is the first time you've ever shown any... What's the matter? You drunk? Drunk with happiness. How would you like to have breakfast in bed for a whole month? How would you like to see California? Yeah, and take the kids, too. How would you like to have your head examined? Rocky's giving me a vacation starting next week for a whole month. And look, a thousand dollars. I saved it up for a honeymoon. Oh, Gabby. Oh. Of course, we can't go around telling people it's a honeymoon. Oh, Gabby. Mommy, we're going to live while we're able. Oh, Mommy, Daddy, me. Just think, Mommy. In another week, we'll be seeing beautiful flowers, pineapple groves. Orange groves, Gabby. Who cares? <laughs> now i got to get back to work. Oh. Hey, I'm not going to wait here all night for that guy. Promised to be here not later than six. Yeah, he only had a short trip. There's no reason for him to be late. Hello, Rocky. Is Gabby back yet? No. I've been waiting for him to check in, and he's way overdue. Well, certainly I checked at the well. Why do you think I'm worried? I was just going to call you. Well, you check the Porterville Road and see if Gabby came through there. I'll go to the well and cover the back road. All right. All right, Rocky. Hello. Five Points Garage. Yeah. Hey, Tom, you got a car here? Yeah. You and Joe hop in, go over the oil well, will you, and help Rocky check the back road? Fine. Well, hey, don't forget to call me back. All right. Hello, Five Points Garage. Has Gabby Donovan passed there? No, no, I mean coming back this way. Say, Central, stick around, will you? Get on your toes. I got a lot of calls to make. Jimmy Wilson's truck cafe near Porterville. He hasn't been through here. Nope. Ain't seen him in a month. Operator. Operator. No nitro truck passed this way. Yeah, but that was three hours ago. Hey, Buck. Take a run up to the ranger station. The wire's down. I can't get him. Can I do anything to help? No. 
Slow. Full River Powerhouse. I was coming home that night. The same kind of a night as this. I couldn't see a thing. I had a hunch. I knew. All of a sudden, I was afraid. Then I heard a loud noise. My ears hurt. I, I couldn't breathe. My chest... I couldn't see, I tell you. I couldn't see a thing. It was awful, awful. Shut up, Tim. Come on, somebody get him out of here. You're afraid, too. I can tell it. I just know it. You want to quit, but you can't. You can't. Take it easy, Tim. You know you can't. Yeah, hello, Tom. Well, keep on trying. Where's Gabby? Have you heard from him? You've got to tell me. You know Gabby wouldn't be this late in this. Kathy, take her up to the house. Wait. Wait. That's all I've been doing ever since I married Gabby. Sitting at home waiting, waiting. Till sometimes I think I'm going to blow up. Just like those trucks blow up. Waiting. Well, then. Oh. Rocky? Where? And the work men do is not alone their test. John Donovan lived with childlike faith in his maker, his family, and his friends. He had strength without him. What did he find to bury? Courage without One of his father. shoes, a piece he of his He went through life <sighs> setting an example to his fellow men by his unselfishness and his devotion to duty, although he knew without a doubt what the end would be. For him, only our acknowledgement and our remembrance of his greatness, that is his earthly reward. And it is for the Almighty to give him his divine blessing. And so in the midst of life, we have death. But to those who see, there is no death. The stars go down to rise upon a fairer shore and bright in heaven's jewel crown they shine forevermore. You got about an eight hour haul and the roads are pretty tough. But the world's been burning this long, so take your time. <laughs> All right. Say, call up Kathy for me, will you? That's right. Leave me the dirty work. I wish you guys had learned to handle your own women. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Rocky. Hi, Bill. Thought I'd drop out and see if you'd forgotten me. <laughs> we haven't had an order to fly any soup for a month. Well, if things don't pick up pretty soon, I'll have to give up flying. Get a job driving a bus. Well, you live a lot longer at that. Come on in, sir. Hey, Easley, I'm sorry you got such a long haul. I was going to ask you and Kathy to have dinner with me. Yeah, well, I was going to ask you something, too. You keep away from Kathy. Hey, what did you say? You heard what I said. Just keep away from her, that's all. Exactly what he said to me. Well, if he did say it, I can understand why. It's simply because you're a soup hen. Well, what's he, an interior decorator? Did he actually say that? Of course not. Do you think he'd admit he was wrong, that he gambled with 10 years of his life? Don't you see, Dan? He's blindfolded himself. He'll go right on handling nitro and talking about easy living until... Well, why should he criticize me? Because he's afraid I'm going to marry you. And he has every reason to. 
because I love you. Oh, dear, let's get away from all this. I've tried to close my eyes to it, but, but now that you're in it, I just can't. Well, what do we use for money? Well, there, there are lots of ways of making a living. What, for instance, digging ditches? Well, I'll help, Dan. I'll get a job. We'll manage somehow. Millions of people do. Yeah, and feel the landlord's breath on the back of my neck? Nothing doing. Oh, Dan, please. Well, why do you think I'm handling soup? To be stubborn? Kathy, I want to be somebody. I want to get my doctor's degree. Well, I want you to get it. But I don't want you to take the chances you're taking. I've tried everything else, Kathy. And this is the quickest way I've found of earning enough money. Oh, listen, honey, why can't you be a little patient and wait until... Wait. Wait until I stand at your grave like Nancy did at Gabby's? Oh, no, Dan. I couldn't. And I can't give it up. All right, then. I guess it's goodbye. Well, I guess it is. Do you think it's long enough? Uh, well, I suppose so. Well, it's the last fitting. You better look and make sure. Do you think this length is correct? Say, did you folks hear that Dan's going to leave? Yeah. Rocky's going to transfer him to the Arlington Division. Why tell me about it? I don't care. Well, honey, you don't have to jump down my throat. I just mentioned it. Say, what's coming off here anyhow? A wedding or a wake? Well, what's the matter with you, Nancy? I was just thinking. If I had it to do all over again, I'd still marry Gabby. I can't stand any more today. What's the matter, Kathy? Don't you feel good? I'm just tired. Honey, I'm awful happy about you. Eric's a swell kid, and he's going to be awful good to you. He's going to buy you lots of things. A big house, an automobile, lots of pretty dresses. And... You may be able to juggle nitro, but not people's hearts. Nancy, why don't you mind your own business? That's just what I was going to ask you. Why don't you mind yours? Uh-huh. Yes, sir? Tampico, Mexico. Right. I'll start a man down there right away. Boys, I got a tough job for one of you. There's a couple of wells on fire down in Tampico, Mexico, and we got to fly the soup. The job pays a thousand dollars bonus. And as usual, with a flying job, none of you have to take it unless you want it. I'll take that job, Rocky. Do you know that plane has to make three perfect landings between here and Tampico? What do you want it for? A thousand bucks. Well, if you want money that bad, all right. You go home and pick out whatever you need and go to the airfield. I'll have the soup and your asbestos suits there. Thanks, Rocky. Come on, fellas. Mm -hmm. You picked a sweet job for yourself. Uh -huh. He sure picked a tough way to make a thousand bucks. Why, what you gonna do? I'll fly a load of soup down to Tampico and put out a couple of bad fires. You gonna send a thumb-fingered kid on a job like that? You must have misunderstood me. I didn't send him. He went. Well, you might better send my daughter Kathy. That kid couldn't snuff out a bonfire. 
I fought more oil well fires than this whole outfit put together. Don't that rate me a crack at that thousand dollars? I'll quit it, will you, Easy? I'll look at you, Rocky. Don't you try to soft pedal me. I've been with you for 11 years. How does this kid rate this job over me? I said no. And this is one time I mean no. You understand? If you don't like the way I'm running this plant, you can quit. Listen, Rocky, I really need this money. I... All right. I'll loan it to you. Now, if you got to do a McGinty, go shoot yourself. Go jump off a building. But don't get me mixed up in it. Kathy, I just heard Dan's going to fly to Tampico, Mexico with a load of soup. Can you imagine? When did you hear it? Just now in the grocery store. Must be true. Everybody's talking about it. Full book, Dan. Oh, I'll go get my things. I just wanted to tell you that I'm sorry for a lot of things, including this. Here. Rocky changed his mind. I'm going to fly the soup down. Well, good luck, kid. Bring me back one of those senior eaters, will you? Take it easy. Happy landing. Well, you don't have to be crazy to do that, but it sure helps. Say, you're crazy as I am to fly this stuff. Guys our age can't be choosy. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Admiring your handiwork? Well, you've got a lot to be proud of. Why did you have to send Dan? I'm asking you, why did you send him? He's young, he has his whole life ahead of him. Now listen, Kathy, I know it's hard on you women. I know that all the grief is yours, but you've got to understand. Besides, he asked for the job himself. Why, one man's just the same as another to me. At least he hasn't got a family. No, that's right. No family, no attachments. Just you, huh, Rocky? You and... Now, you see, Mr. Sand, as if, uh, if you're planning to raise bees, you're letting yourself in for a lot of trouble. Take it from me, I know. But drop in sometime, and I'll let you know all about it. What are you doing here? He hung one on me. And when I came to, he was gone. Who? Come on, boy, make sense. Easy. Easy? Stop the border.
custom officials. What have you got, please? Load of nitroglycerin. Nitroglycerin? Yeah, would you like to look it over? No, thanks. We can do without that formality. <laughs> All right, senor. Adios, senor. Let's go, Bill. They stopped to refuel at Hermann. Then Tampico. The oil field's about 20 miles from the sea. Well, I guess we won't hear anything till after they've left Jimenez. Better eat your dinner, honey. It's getting cold. I'm not hungry. Come on, snap out of it. I'm getting lonesome talking to myself. Hey, Bill. You ever been married? Yeah, but it didn't take. Kids? No. You? Yeah. Daughter. Transport D sixteen calling Tampico. D sixteen calling Tampico. Tampico to D-16, go ahead. How's the weather there? Dew point 38, wind southeast point 5, barometer 28.60, visibility one mile, ceiling 500 but closing in, low pressure area moving south, fly at 6,000. That should get you over the Tamaulipas Sierra. Go ahead. All right, Tampico, here we go. I think I've gotten both now. Here, Kathy, drink this. It'll help you. I'd give anything if I were up there instead of him. Got me worried. Hello, Tampico. Well, we're over the Sierras, but it's pretty muggy up here. How's it down there? Wind changed to southwest, point five. Fog blowing in from the sea. Visibility half mile. Closing in rapidly. You'll just about make it. Just about won't do. Be with you in 30 minutes. Gotta be almost there. Well, we got about 20 minutes flying gas left. Hello, Tampico. Coming in. Should be just about over you, flying at 1,500. Turn on your field lights. What do you want me to do, land in the dark? Some Pico to D-16. What do you mean, turn on the field lights? They're on. You're right over the field. When you make your approach, watch those mountains on your right. Tampico to D-16. Tampico to D-16. Go ahead, Tampico. You're flying away from the field. Due west toward the oil field. I'll try another approach. Drop a flare when I think I'm over the field. Stop playing with those checkers. You're driving me crazy. That's about it.
out. You'll hit the tower. Climbing for altitude, Tampico. We're bailing out. No, we're not. Don't be a sucker. Let go. You can't do it. This town's under us, and thousands of people. Now, you head this thing toward the ocean. Do you hear? If you don't, let's smash one of these cans. Hello, Tampico. We're going to try to dump this stuff in the ocean. Pico, will you do me a favor? Tell my daughter I... I know she's blaming Dan for this. But tell her not to do it. Tell her to get together with him. For me. Dan. happened the way he always wanted to go. Dan, please don't let anything happen to us. Please. I won't, Kat. <laughs> 